السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا وحبيبنا وشفيعنا وقائدنا وقرة عيوننا سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم يا ربنا لك الحمد كما ينبغي لجلال وجهك وعظيم سلطانك اللهم افتح علينا فتوح العارفين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا يا أرحم الراحمين Today, inshallah, we will uh, talk about two of the women who were around Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who lived at his time and who had learned a lot from Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and who have given their society a lot. The first of our characters is Fatima bint Muhammadin radiyallahu anha. The first one is Fatima, the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, Fatima radiyallahu anha was uh, an amazing person. So whose daughter, whose wife, and whose mother was as Zahra, that was her nickname. She had another nickname that Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, has given her, and we will come to that later. But she is known for as Zahra. She was the daughter of uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, and she had the honor of being his daughter and the daughter of Khadija. Radiallahu anha, the first Muslim woman. As a wife, she was the wife of Ali ibn Abi Talib, whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored him since childhood. And we all know that uh, Ali radiallahu anhu never worshipped idols or never prostrated to any statue. He was the cousin of Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He fought with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was the fourth caliph. Fatima radiallahu anha was his wife. And they had uh, both uh, Al-Hasan, Al-Hussein, Zainab. And uh, uh, they had... Um, uh, so Fatima radiallahu anha was five years old when Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was, was uh, honored with prophethood so she grew up watching her father suffering from Quraysh and suffering uh, from, uh, she, she grew up also seeing the companions suffering the aggression of the chieftains of Quraysh. She felt sorry for her father and she tried to support him against his enemies. She was too young. She was less than 10 years old. So the cruelest scene that Fatima witnessed in her life about her father, against her father, was when, Sayyid, when he, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, was praying in the yard uh, around the Kaaba. And while he was uh, doing his sujood, uh, a non-believer called Uqba ibn Abi Ma'id threw a camel's intestine on his head. And everybody began to laugh and uh, uh, they were mocking Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam stayed in his position until Fatima Radiallahu Anha saw him and she came rushing and she removed the filth from his back and head. Then Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam rose up and he turned to the people of Quraysh 
He looked at them firmly and he invoked uh, the wrath of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon them. And he said, oh Allah, take revenge on the people, uh, on, on these people. Oh Allah, take revenge on Abu Jahl, Utbah ibn Abi Rabi'ah, Shayba ibn Rabi'ah. Utbah ibn Rabi'ah, Shayba ibn Rabi'ah, Uqba ibn Abi Ma'id, and Ubay ibn Khalaf. He made dua against them. So the people of Quraysh feared the consequences of his prayers because they knew they 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 were they knew of his credibility. And many years later, during the Battle of Badr, Fatima radiallahu anha saw those very people whom Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu wasallam has prayed against being killed around the well of Badr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them for their deeds and for their evil uh, deeds and for their ignorance. So Fatima radiallahu anha lived in the field of Dawa from her childhood and she took part uh, uh, in several aspects where, where it was appropriate for her age and gender. And being the youngest daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, she stayed with her parents long after her three sisters got married. And the Prophet وسلم, always, always mentioned her as one of the most beloved to him. So now uh, Fatima radiallahu anha was witnessing all the events and uh, years passed and uh, there were the uh, uh, the problems and it was the year when the uh, uh, the siege, when uh, the Muslims were kept in the shab of Abi Talib. And at that time, her mom, Sayyidah Khadija radiallahu anha, was getting weaker day after day. When that siege was about to end, Khadija radiallahu anha was so sick, subhanAllah. And the, uh, uh, a little bit later, Khadija radiallahu anha passed away. And maybe the uh, uh, Fatima radiallahu anha uh, was the second after Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who was very, very saddened by the death of Khadija radiallahu anha. So when years passed and uh, Khadi, um, uh, Fatima radiallahu anha felt how important uh, her position is now taking care of her father. She was very caring. She was very loving to her, to, to her father. And uh, whenever, uh, uh, whenever she would see him, she's, she's so loving. She is uh, uh, so caring. Until Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave her her nickname, Ummu Abiha. So at the beginning of this session, I started with Fatima Zahra. So her first nickname was a Zahra. And the second nickname that her father gave was Ummu Abiha, the mother of her father. And this is why, because she was so caring about her father. Now, when uh, 
Fatima radiallahu anha was 17 years old. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the permission to migrate to Medina. So uh, Fatima started her new life in Medina. And she saw how her father was establishing the new state. So she supported her father. She, she supported him with everything she could. And when it was uh, the Battle of Badr, uh, her sister Ruqiyya uh, was sick. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked her husband Uthman ibn Affan to stay with her, not to go to the battle, but to stay with her uh, in uh, the uh, uh, in Medina. So he did, and he did not go with the Muslims to the Battle of Badr. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, predestined that it's her time. So she passed away. And she was buried. And uh, uh, Fatima radiallahu anha was very, very, very saddened by the death of her sister. She cried hardly, and nothing calmed her except for the uh, victory news of the Muslims during that uh, that battle, the battle of uh, uh, Badr. <clears throat> Again, she was patient. And she stood fast and she supported her father again and again. SubhanAllah, uh, a few year, a few months after, after the uh, uh, battle, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen that this is the time of uh, Fatima to get married. So, uh, Fatima radiallahu anha uh, received so many suitors. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam did not accept the suitors. Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu was one of them. Umar radiallahu anhu was one of them. So they both proposed, but the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam apologized gently. And people began to talk about Fatima and the excellence of the suitors coming to ask her hand in marriage. And they informed Ali ibn Abi Talib, and they encouraged him to propose. So Ali radiallahu anhu said, should I propose after Abu Bakr and after Umar? They were rejected, should I propose? And the people reminded him of the ties of kinship between him and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So he got uh, courageous uh, a little bit and he went uh, to visit Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam now with a mission so Ali radiallahu anhu was too shy to speak so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made uh, uh, made him uh, wanted to break the ice so he asked him what, is, what does Ali bin Abi Talib want? So what's the purpose of your visit? And immediately Ali mentioned Fatima radiallahu anha, the daughter 
سيدنا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم and the answer of the prophet was welcome that word welcome found Ali's heart he he uh, as well as his friend who were with him understood that it meant that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam accepted him as a husband for his daughter so that was his wish to marry fatima now the prophet asked him what will you give fatima for her dowry and ali answered i have nothing to offer as a door. And the Prophet ﷺ said, he reminded him, where is the shield of al hatimiyah that I once gave you? And Ali said, I still have it. So the Prophet ﷺ said, give it to her as, a door, as her door. And this great moment had a special implications. So when Ali عنه, proposed to marry the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, he had no idea that the door would, could be an obstacle. He knew that marriage in Islam is based on religion and moral values rather than financial considerations. And he knew that the door is only a symbol of the sacred marriage tie. So can we compare this to, to what is being requested today from, from the suitor? We have to go back to the origin of our religion. Is nothing but a symbol. Again, this doesn't mean to refuse to get the door. No, no, the door is something that it's the right of the bride. It is her right. But it should be within the range that the suitor can, it can afford. Getting married should not be a burden. It would be something happy. So the Prophet وسلم, once said, and this is a very well-known hadith narration, he said, if one whose religiousness and manners comes to you to marry your daughter, accept him. This is important. You depend, check religion, check his religion. Is he religious enough? Is he a righteous person? How, how about his manners? Does he have good manners? She's gonna live with, with this person and he needs to have, he must have good manners. He must, he must be righteous. So, so she, he treats her with fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, most of the, of the time, you see that they, they, the parents accepted the marriage of the so Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu asked Ali radiallahu anh, who proposed for his daughter Fatima, uh, what dowry are you going to give her? And Ali answered, I have nothing to offer as a dowry. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam reminded him, where is the shield of al hatimiyah that I once gave you. And Ali said, I still have it. And the Prophet وسلم, said, give it to her as a door. So this great moment had special implications. Now, when Ali proposed to marry a daughter, the daughter of Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, he had no idea that the door could be an obstacle. He knew that marriage in Islam is based on religion, and moral values rather than financial considerations. And he also knew that the door is only a symbol 
of the sacred marriage tie. So the Prophet once said, if one whose religiousness and manners come to you to marry your daughter, accept him. So imagine what was the request of Sayyidina Muhammad and compare it to what things, to, to what people are requesting today. So did the Prophet ﷺ refuse Ali when he said, when he said, I don't have anything to give as a door? Did he, uh, did he say, I'm not gonna, um, I'm not gonna get, uh, give you my daughter? No, he reminded him. He reminded him of the shield that he has once given him. And Ali gave Fatima the, the, the shield as a dower. And initially that, that shield was a present from her father. So marriage used to be as simple as that at the time of Prophet And all his wives and daughters are good examples of this, despite being the novel of all women in humanity. So it was simple. So with such simplicity remained for years. The simplicity of getting married, this simplicity remained for years until things asked for ex extravagance dollars. So therefore, Money has become an obstacle in uh, obstacle to men and women, to Muslim men and women who want, who wish to get married. Now, although the shield became Fatima's, it was expected that one day Ali would use it in fighting the enemies of Allah. And what what used to Fatima was an object that's only needed by men in battles. Now, the wedding day is there, it arrived, it was the wedding day, and Ali anhu, had sold his camel and some of his personal belongings for 408 dirhams, and uh, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, when he heard this, he told him, spend two-thirds of the money on perfume and the remaining third on household articles. So Ali radiallahu anh, uh, he, uh, uh, did what Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said. And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to Ali, the bride must have a banquet. So now, if you look at the sequence of events, just imagine that you are at the... At the uh, the marriage party of Ali radiallahu anha and Fatima radiallahu anha. So, proposal, dowry, uh, party, banquet, and this was all the uh, uh, the the steps that are to be uh, uh, followed in simple marriages. Happy marriages. So the Prophet وسلم, the people around him volunteered uh, to to uh, to do the, the to make the wedding banquet because Ali Rotullah uh, was not able to to do a whole uh, wedding banquet. And Sad Rotullah one of the Ansar said. I have a lamp. And another one said, I will uh, buy the grain. And the other one, so it was a huge, big party for Ali and Fatima. Anha. So everybody shared the joy of the bride and the groom around the banquet. And this is how Islamic weddings should be. So why have we changed it? SubhanAllah, these days it's so complicated. It's a burden. No. So 
look at look at how Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. What what did he do with the house of uh, Sayyida uh, Sayyida Fatima? Imagine she is the daughter of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he furnished his daughter's house, Fatima's house, with a bed, a leather pillow, and a leather flask for drinking and a water skin. Yeah, that's all. That's all. Other people uh, uh, in, uh, covered the floor of their house with sand, and this was one of the uh, customs at that time. And in the evening, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, said to Ali, don't do anything until I meet you. And then he, Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, went to the bride and the groom and asked them to get him a bowl in which he made a lotion. And then he, he poured the water for Ali, saying, may Allah bless them. So he poured the water on them and he said, may Allah bless them and bless their descendants. And he backboned Fatima radiallahu anha and who was shy and uh, she stumbled in her dress with embarrassment and, and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wetted her with the same water and he prayed for her and then he said oh Fatima by Allah I only spared you so that you marry the best one in the family so that was the marriage of Fatima radiallahu anha to uh, uh, Sayyidina Ali radiallahu anhu. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed them with Al-Hasan and then al Hussein, And Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to love them a lot, a lot. He used to play with them. He used to, to, uh, to be happy with them. He used to kiss them. He used to wrestle with them. Oh, let me tell you uh, a funny story about uh, Al Hasan al Hussein with Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. One day, both uh, young boys were were uh, wrestling, and Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam was saying, "Hey Hasan, hey Hasan." Fatima radiallahu anha looked at at Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and she said, "Oh." Father, why are you encouraging? Why are you cheering up for Hassan? What about Hussein? He said to her, Oh, Jibril is on the other corner. He's saying, Hey, Hussein, hey, Hussein. Sayyidina Muhammad وسلم, loved the two boys. He loved the, the two girls also of uh, Sayyida Fatima. And uh, now, uh, uh, Aisha radiallahu anha one day, uh, sorry, uh, Fatima radiallahu anha one day came to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And she said, she said to him that she, she, she was uh, so uh, tired of the housework, of the, uh, uh, of, of uh, getting water into the house, of grinding the, uh, uh, using the mill and grinding the grain to, to prepare the bread. So sh she and her husband agreed that she would go to, uh, to her father and she will ask for a servant. So she did. She reached the house of her father and she sat silent beside him. And Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked her, why did you come, my daughter? And she was too shy. She said, I came to ask about you. And she returned home. So Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam knew later that uh, she came again and she did not find him. So he went, he went to them and he said, uh, he knew why, why, uh, Khadi, why Fatima came to them and he said, it came to him and he said to her and to her husband, I will teach you something. If you say it, it will be better for you than having a servant. He said, when you go to bed, then 
uh, say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, 33 times. Alhamdulillah, 33 times. Allahu Akbar, 34 times. And that total is 100. So this is better for you than a servant. So this was about Fatima, radiallahu anha. And subhanallah, uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, it was now the uh, 